This is your tech news briefing for Tuesday, August 9th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Crypto has been one of the hottest technologies for the past several years, luring countless entrepreneurs, billions in funding from investors, and an impassioned base of crypto holders. One of the people who saw an opportunity in the space was Alex Mashinsky, who founded the crypto lender Celsius in 2017. A serial entrepreneur, Mashinsky has been barreling into industries, promising to revolutionize them for nearly 30 years. In an interview with High Tech TV at a crypto conference in 2018, Mashinsky said his goal was to get more people into crypto. Celsius succeeded in getting a lot of people on board, promising depositors high returns and low risk. But the company held on to little collateral to back up its loans, according to 2021 investor documents reviewed by The Wall Street Journal. And in June, amid a drop in crypto values, it froze customer accounts. And last month, it filed for bankruptcy protection. This isn't the first of Mashinsky's projects to leave a sour taste for partners and investors. So how did Mashinsky get to this point? And what happens to Celsius's customers? Joining us to discuss this is WSJ reporter Vicky Huang. Hi, Vicky. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. So Alex Mashinsky, he was a big name in the crypto market. So was his company Celsius. Can you tell us a bit about how he rose to prominence in this space? Yes. So Alex Mashinsky launched Celsius Network in 2017. And just within five years, he grew it into one of the biggest crypto lenders in the space. The company had more than 20 billion assets at its peak. So Alex is frequently on YouTube live streaming, answering questions of Celsius customers. He has always been a regular fixture at different crypto conferences and um, media. So he really was sort of the face of the company. You know, so many uh, tech founders and particularly crypto founders, they have this kind of this cachet, this like aura about them that really attracts certain investors and groups of people. Did Mashinsky have that? Was that true for him in Celsius? Yes. He often spoke about Celsius in very grand terms. He often spoke about leaving a legacy for his kids. That's why he's building this company. And um, he often spoke about building a decentralized financial platform. So he definitely has that sort of draw for investors and customers. He definitely built a legion of loyal customers who he calls Celsians. And um, he was able to draw a lot of institutional investors as well. Last year, Celsius raised $750 million from some very credible institutional investors. Okay, but now, you know, the crypto market is going through this this route, people are pulling their money out, and Celsius in particular has filed for bankruptcy. What has the company or Mashinsky said about the company going through this process? So Alex Mashinsky has been fairly quiet about things since the company paused withdrawals in June, and he hasn't really made any comments in media or responded to any of our requests for comment. But in a statement issued after Celsius filed for bankruptcy in July, Mr. Mashinsky did say the move was the right decision for our community and company. He said, I'm confident when we look back at the history of Celsius, we'll see this as a defining moment. But we should know here that companies can restructure and emerge from the bankruptcy court. Okay, you know, this is not Mashinsky's first venture. He had a lot of experience before doing this. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What was his background? He is a serial entrepreneur who really proposed a lot of different moonshot ideas in different industries over many years. So he promised revolutions in long-distance calling, airport rides before getting into crypto, But really, some of his companies have been more successful than others, but he often left companies under very tense circumstances. One of his companies, Groundlink, which we looked into, 
It basically had the same idea as Uber or Lyft today, but the company for some reason didn't really take off. And then a private equity company took over and installed new leadership. So Alex exited the company. You know, given that experience, what are people who you spoke to kind of saying about what's happened at Celsius? How are they kind of linking those two things? Some business associates who worked with Alex in the past, they are not exactly surprised about how Celsius ended up in today's state, given how they interacted with Alex and how he often had these big ideas and wanted to grow at all costs, but couldn't really see it through. You know, for the investors and customers who bought into the idea of Celsius, where are they going to be left now? And is there anything we can learn from the past ventures that would kind of help us get some foresight on what their situation might end up being? For many investors and customers in Celsius, it's likely to be a long uphill battle for them in terms of getting their money back because terms of use on the Celsius website state that in the event of a bankruptcy, customers might not be able to recover the cryptocurrencies in their accounts or the collateral they put up to take out loans from Celsius. So it might take a long time for customers to see their money back if they ever get to have their money back. All right, that's our reporter, Vicky Huang. Thanks so much for joining us, Vicky. Thank you for having me. And that's it for today's Tech News Briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. And if you like our show, please rate and review it. You can do that wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening. Thank you.